Good morning. Let's get out of my call and over to Yellow Pine. It's July 2nd, it is Saturday, and everything is going to be stupid busy because 4th of July weekend. film the whole way because why not and I got gas already so I don't need that I will get water and stuff probably in yellow pine for camping I think I'll, I don't know where I'm gonna end up today it's 200 miles from yellow pine to pine and the goal is not really to get to pine today because that would be a little much and today is going to be a religious day for Ride Right because there is a ton of people in town. I didn't realize McCall was this big of like a tourist community. God, there was people everywhere. And people on vacation don't believe that there are rules. So they tend to do really silly things. Oh, hi, dear. You're a little one. Pavement ends. <sighs> All those workarounds are too bad. I was looking forward to seeing some of that. And there is one large water crossing today if I get that far south which I will be avoiding. Apparently, several people have drowned bikes in it in the last few weeks. There's apparently a pretty easy workaround though, so not a big deal. Ooh, Ooh down to 50, okay. That's why I got a little chilly all of a sudden. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to sound like a complainer or anything, but it's like, man, it's actually, it actually got kind of chilly back in here. Look, town 50. Oh, it actually did get kind of chilly back in here. North of Yellow Pine, it goes out and it goes to a place called Bergdorf Hot Springs. And the pass, which is Elk Summit Pass, I believe, between Bergdorf and Yellow Pine is closed. It's still snowed in. So there's a section of trail that I could have followed north of Bergdorf and then diverted off into McCall. A huge chunk of it is paved anyway, so I really didn't miss anything. I mean, I, it was really pretty on the area that I was at. Whatever, you know. I think it was Tana, somebody, somebody sent me a thing the other day, and they did the math on, through Owen Wilson's career, he's made, you know, however much money in his career, he said in a movie or TV show or whatever, wow, uh, like a, a certain number of times, like I can't, it was like a hundred or something. And so then for all of the wows that he's said in TVs or movies, he's made like $140,000 per one. It was something like, it was something hilarious like that. I'd, I'd probably be okay with saying, wow, myself, if, it, if I'm getting 140 grand for it. Oh, hi, dear. Oh, excuse me. 
Okay, this is super churned up. It's not real deep, so it's not causing any kind of handling issues. It's just kicking up a lot of dust. All the side-by-sides and Jeeps and stuff just churn it to powder. Honestly, unfortunately, it's mostly the side-by-sides. Most side-by-sides have a, a locked diff, a locked differential uh, between the wheels. So it means that no matter what, the outside and inside wheels turn at the same rate, even when going through a turn. A normal vehicle, you have either a limited slip differential, or uh, I can't remember what the other one's called, but basically it allows the inside and outside wheel in a turn to turn at different rates. When you're off-road, you kind of want both wheels to turn, to pull because it gives you power and you don't have that on side-by-sides. I don't know of any real side-by-side -side that has a limited slip or free play differential. And so when they're going through this kind of stuff, even if the wheel is slipping, like if it's in low traction environment, both wheels are still pulling. And so that's why it kind of grinds this stuff into powder. Whereas with most passenger vehicles and even 4x4 trucks and stuff like that, this isn't something that you're going to lock the differential on because it's not technical enough, even if you have it in four-wheel drive. It's also why a lot of ATVs tear stuff up. They throw so much more dust in the air. Good God. Well, Yellow Pine is awesome. Had breakfast, brunch, whatever you want to call it, down there at the corner, which was excellent. Everybody knows what the BDR is. The general store is owned by a former racer and ADV guy. So, yeah. Invert travel direction, back. Oh yeah, he's got a nice one. Just wait a minute. Very nice. He said he was just throwing his gear on. Oops, that's a glove. Oh, I need to ask him his name again. I didn't catch it. A few moments later. Doing 80 miles an hour. <laughs> I've, I've done that on this bike too, where I look down and I'm like, oh, that's 55 on a road that I really don't want to be doing that. Like, I don't want to taco a wheel when I hit a pole or something. <laughs> that's Tim Burke. I know Tim Burke. Mostly his photography. How's it going? How long are you going today? Uh, today, I'll probably end up somewhere near Pine. Originally, yeah. A long ride. Uh, yeah. So I I went on the road April first. Oh wow. wow! So I've gone down through New Mexico, up Arizona, Utah, across the top of Nevada, Washington, wow. came, and I'm coming down Idaho. When are you gonna go home? Uh, hopefully never. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 goal is I'm, I joke that I'm calling it ride till I can't. So, yeah. I'll go. I'll go back through Colorado late August, um, so I'll stop by, see family, and do some chores. <laughs> What's this thing? A camera. Oh wow! 
So I do YouTube stuff. Okay. So, so yeah. You're tracking your trip. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like photo albums, but video. Okay. So, yeah. mo mostly catches a lot of me swearing in the helmet and, you know, getting stuck in bad situations. Meerkat. Meerkat. Because Meerka oh. <laughs> that's what you because that's what you look like when you're standing up on the bike. Does your back get sore? Right? Um, I mean sometimes, but mostly that's just from being in the military <laughs> more than more than being on the bike. Outstanding. All right, well enjoy. Yep. Have a good one. So I got Tim Burke with me, running into each other in the middle of nowhere, Idaho. That's hilarious. He's gonna ride with me for about 30 miles and then we'll split off because he's going home and I'm continuing towards Pine. And it sounds like I may get closer to Pine today than I thought because the lady at the corner store was telling me it's actually pretty damn easy. Yeah, that's funny. So if you don't know Tim Burke, look up Tim Burke Photography and you will uh, see a lot of really good photos of motorcycling. He traveled around the world for several years. His Instagram is amazing. And he got back and kind of settled into regular life as an airport operations manager here in Idaho. 197 miles oh I'm only 50 miles from Deadwood Reservoir okay so I'm gonna make it past there today good lord I thought it was further away than that god it is just beautiful back here Yeah, we're gonna be ripping on this road for a minute. God. But yeah, if you know about Upshift Magazine or kind of any of those ones, you'll have seen Tim Burke's pictures. I didn't know what he looks like because he doesn't really ever share photos of himself. If they are, he's in riding gear. So yeah, I didn't really know what he looked like. Yeah, he was talking about the uh, 900. He'll catch himself going way too fast on stuff. And it's because the bike is just so smooth. The only problem with that bike is that with the triple, it really wants to make power higher up in the rev range. Now, Triumph's done a really good job of fixing that with the 900 because they made it basically imitate a 270 degree firing angle like the Scrambler used to have. And so it makes power lower earlier. But all of the triples, they, you kind of have to rev them to really get them to perform. And he was joking like, he, sometimes he feels like he's just gonna burn his clutch because he's having to rev it so much. sure this is the section that they were joking about on their video that they got here and he marked a waypoint as end rally stage because yeah but yeah we were kind of talking about side by sides and he, he made the point you know oh hi dear that uh the side by sides and some of these other off-road vehicles have lowered the bar to entry for off-roading and recreating fairly far into the backcountry on even some pretty gnarly stuff. It's had other effects that aren't necessarily as positive. I will always support people recreating in the backcountry. It, like, enjoy nature. That's, that's why we've preserved a lot of these areas, so that people can enjoy them for recreation. 
but there's a responsibility that comes with that as well to ensure that other people can also recreate and enjoy it. When you're being a jerk and not being responsible with how you're behaving in the backcountry, it affects other people and it affects other people's enjoyment. And so by lowering the bar to entry to something where basically anybody, if they have enough money, can buy one of these vehicles and get just about anywhere, you run into people who don't have the skills, knowledge, and experience in enjoying the backcountry to behave responsibly. They, they literally don't know what they don't know. And they don't know that what they're doing is in some cases kind of ruining it for everybody else. That's pretty loose and deep. Oh yeah. Let's go over here. Yes, please. You know, that's one of the things that the BDR organizations are really good about is advocating for responsible stewardship in the backcountry. One of the main things that they do is advocate for responsible backcountry riding. Staying on trails, riding right, not harassing wildlife, riding responsibly, like all of these things are things that everybody should be doing when they're enjoying the backcountry. So treat it nicely. I think that was a 690. Same deal. You gotta you gotta ride right. A big old group. It'd be great if anybody was giving me hand signals on how many there were. Ooh, that's deep. Holy sh! Let's let's make sure he's still with me after that. Hi, dear. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. a lot of deer for the amount of traffic that's been coming up this road. They sure don't seem to mind. More. Going fast as hell side by side. He indicated there might be one more. But I don't think so. Yeah, I turn right up here in a minute. Yep. He's got the quick shifter on that thing. Oh, he probably knows these roads a hell of a lot better than I do. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff where you feel like a friggin' speeder bike.
<laughs> Ooh, that was great. Ooh, okay. Oh, God. It's nice and washed out. See if I can do this without eating <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to put my side stand down, but Let me get you yeah, you got a big rock for me? Yeah, I think this is where we say goodbye. I go that way to stand like yep. the BDR goes that way. We'll get a photo of them. Oh, oh absolutely. Oh. Side by side the quad, can they let you pass? After a bit. I think it took him a second to realize he was, was like zooming up and slowing down. Some of that sand though can get oh my god that one I, there was one corner i actually slowed down to make sure you were still there because came into the corner it's like oh shit, that's deep <laughs> i yeah the only i knew about it because i came up yesterday sure and i sent my rear end out way beyond my front wheel <laughs> all right man I, safe travels you as well i'm gonna get on over here <laughs> what's that i said if you run into any issues in idaho let me know I'll yeah no worries Take it easy. All right, well, that was the man, the myth, the legend, Tim Burke. Always nice to run into a friendly face. All right, well, I got eight miles to Deadwood Reservoir. I got 37 miles to this creek crossing and 155 to Pine. I do not anticipate making it to Pine today doesn't mean that I'm not going to, it's just I'm not trying to. Oh, butterfly. Oh. Jesus, dude. He was indicating he was by himself, but Christ, he was probably doing 70. Like I think I, I think the fastest I got going back there was 55-ish, and that was when I was on a long straightaway where I could absolutely see where I'm going. That dude had to be going close to 70, and he was doing it coming around a corner. There's like four or five campgrounds all right along the lake here. Says 84. Ooh. I don't remember seeing pictures of this, but yeah, okay. That's called a Widowmaker. AKA Nope Tree. It's so funny, it's like as soon as I said bye to Tim, I have not seen any other motorcycles. <laughs> Hi dear. Bye dear. <laughs> oh, 31 miles to the Loman gas station. So I should make that today. So I'll stop there, fill up, and grab stuff for dinner. And I might just see whether or not there's anywhere to stay in Loman, like a campground or park or something. Of these flowers. What a view, what a view. Let's go look at what this looks like. 
See, that doesn't look that bad. It, it's definitely flowing. Oh god, yeah, you can hear the water from here. Oh yeah, it gets deep in the middle. You can see... Oh, there's big rocks too. Yeah, it just drops off like right there. That's at least knee deep with big rocks. So yeah, that's gonna be a hard no for a while. I would guess little bikes could probably do it, but anything bigger than probably a 500, and you're gonna need three people just to hang on to it while you walk it across. Cause yeah, that water is just gonna try and take the bike. It's flowing fast. So, okay. We'll get down here, reconnect with the route, and get into Loman, which is 22 miles away. But yeah, I guess as many as five people have drowned bikes in that creek crossing and had to get back into Loman.